Hello again, Gooners! It's TLC, the Loose Cannon 103, and I would like to introduce you in a moto! Or is it? Oh, yes, in a moto. Otherwise known as Alan Gibson and Jay Soccer magazine. Oh, hey, what's up, us? Yes, I'm glad, I'm glad you've come here with your fluent Japanese. There are a few <coughs> Japan related questions. Obviously, Arsenal have been on tour in Japan. A few Japan related snacks here, too. And uh, I'm sure they didn't eat these in Nagoya. They probably did, actually. They're quite. Are they tasty? Yeah. Or, you know, what, what about these? Mm. Is someone else you're advertising? Yeah, they're quite tasty. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to advertise one what we're going to be speaking about amongst other things. We were talking about the soiree situation. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to advertise what we're going to be speaking about amongst other things. We'll talk about the soiree situation yet again because there have been a few developments. I'm going to be asking some pressing questions. We're going to be advertising this magazine, which has an article written by yours truly, not this Inamoto guy, but this Inamoto guy who's not wearing an Inamoto shirt. But it's all about Ria Miechi. Did I pronounce that well enough for you? And then yes, Miechi. Thank you very much, John. And then we got uh, the Sesk situation. A bit more about that. What else are we going to talk about? Javinho. You might not want to talk about him, but we need to talk about him. We're also going to talk about. Why does it take so long for transfers to happen? And a lot on that. And also about Japanese players um, in Europe. Why aren't there more of them, given what Arsene Wenger has recently said, or I've recently found that he's said. So we'll talk about all of those aspects. And we'll start off with Suarez, because that's the big news, of course. The news, that, well, is it news? I don't know. But they're saying in England now that Thomas Vermaelen and Mikel Arteta are going to be instrumental in helping Suarez make that move from Liverpool to London. The reason why they're saying that is because Arteta speaks Spanish. Oui. You can see where journalists come from with these stories. He speaks Spanish and he is going to, to tell him in Spanish how to find the right school for his daughter and how to find a house that he can live in. And so he's going to Fulham. Yeah. Why? They've got a lot of Spanish players. Yeah, they've got loads of uh, Spanish speaking people uh, yeah. going to schools there as well. Oh, okay. I'll take your word for it. But teammates, how important are they? Because, I mean, you, you played at a reasonable level. I mean, and you was, I was thinking, I thought, you are the right person to ask this, this question because you were so greedy. You weren't much of a team player, I'm sorry. You're a good, good goal, goal scorer. Goal scorer. Thank but, you. Thank you. But you wouldn't, if you were through on goal, there is absolutely no way. I mean, I would make a run in the centre thinking there's no way Alan's going to pass it. You know, the thing not is, that I've changed, but I mean, yeah. our listeners and readers <laughs> and viewers probably don't want to hear it, but I've actually changed now, you know? Yeah. And now I'm on the receiving end of that, to be honest. <laughs> you know, my voice on the team, oh, dear, they never pass. Chondo, Chondo, yeah. I'm talking about you. Yeah, so um, teammates are important. Do you think, um, like, Suarez is going to move to Arsenal because, like, Vermaelen knows him from Holland, and, you know, Rosicki's come out and said that he really likes Suarez to, to sign up for Arsenal. And a lot of the players, and uh, Giroud said, I don't mind if Suarez joins, I think I can play with him, or, you know, whatever happens, I, I don't mind. So, they've been quite welcoming mm. to him, the Arsenal awesome players, but do you think that makes it any difference? Did you say Rosicki's come out? Uh, I think he's come out and said that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, obviously teammates are important, you've got to settle in, you know, but I think, mm. to be honest, families are more important. The mm. wives and the, the kids yeah. get on. It's yeah. a lot easier mm. for, the, mm. for the players to do that. Do you remember there was a there was a player at West Ham who, who stayed a very short space of time because his because his wife wouldn't come down south and he went up back in, back up north. And wasn't and there a problem with some mm. certain Chelsea players and getting on too well with the other wives? Oh yeah, there was that aspect too. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think the families are an important thing. Uh, obviously, teammates. You mm. know, you, you're professional on the field. You get on with the job, and if you don't talk to your teammates. Obviously, it doesn't help, but yeah. I don't think it's as important as families and backgrounds. So, so let me let me put this question to you. Just imagine yourself in a Suarez situation. You you're at a club, you're at a club, and you suddenly realise everyone everyone either doesn't like you very much or they kind of hate you. Would you would you be able to play on for that team? That's the big question. I think you'd probably be on a lot of money. Looking for yeah, if you're on a lot of money, I'd say. If the wife's happy, if the kids are happy, and you're scoring goals for that team, but you, you know, then it's, it's you know, do you, do you care if you're getting 150,000 quid a week or something? See, the thing is, being in that position as well, you don't need the rest. All you need is the passes mm -hmm. and to convert them, and then, and that's it, really. You don't need. You, you know, I've often thought, and you know, this is totally digressing as we always do. But, <laughs> you know, is a player on 
let's say even only 25,000 quid a week, mm. <laughs> only, you know, compared to us. You know, some player on the bench, at, let's, you know, take Stoke City, West Brom, a middling team, no offense, mm. Stoke City and West Brom, guys. Right? A uh, guy on the bench at Stoke City getting 20, 25,000 quid a week, presumably, I'm not sure. Is that player happy? Because he's probably never going to be an international player. He's probably mm. never going to win FA Cups and League Championships. Mm. He's got a decent job. He's got some good money. He never plays, except in the reserves. That's a good, you know, is that player happy with his life? Well, but if he's got, I think, I think they'll just make do. I mean, some players, if they've got a chance to move on, then they'll take, take a cut in wages. I mean, I know a couple of players have moved to Millwall recently and taken a wage cut to go there. I think they'd be a bit mad, to be honest, even though I love Millwall, but yeah. I think they're a bit mad to do that, but that's, that's their call. But they want to get some playing time under exactly. their Exactly, so do the players want to play? Or and to be so honest... take one step back to go two steps exactly, forward. Exactly, but to be honest, you know, if you're on 25,000 quid a week and it goes to 15,000 quid a week, you can still survive, mm. can't you? Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. So, you know, it's still sort of academic, really. But, um, so I'm totally wasting your time. In a way, in a way, I, mean, I haven't got a gun to shoot you, as they did in Monty Python, uh, what is it, cheese shop sketch, but, um, but you're eating crispy, cheesy flavoured, they're not cheesy flavoured, are they? They could be, they're not bad, yeah. But anyway, let's, uh, let's just continue on the Suarez note for a moment, or kind of, it's related. Thomas Vermaelen, of course, is injured. Is he really injured? Because there's been talk about he could mm -hmm. be moving on. And I was going to ask you the question that sort of relates to the football generally, about Wayne Rooney, which has also been linked to Arsenal, he's supposedly injured or has been. Yeah. Um, a lot of players that are about to move on are supposedly injured. Jovino being another one, supposedly injured, but on the verge of a move to Roma for £8 million. The bid has been accepted, apparently, yeah. so that's the semi-breaking news. How much did they pay for him? They paid £10.8 so losing £2.8 million. He's losing a lot. Yeah, yeah well, he didn't start with a lot. Yeah. So, so what do you reckon? Is that good value? And also, is this whole thing about injured players a bit of a smokescreen for um, let's do a transfer deal while they're injured? Jovino hasn't settled in really, has he? Not at all. Um, so I'd snap the arms off of anyone paying eight million quid mm. for it, or whatever it is. Yeah. Especially with um, the youngster coming through. I mean, yeah. 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 Me yeah. Um, Have Arsenal got the backing? Have they? You know, they got mm. enough. Forward, forward thinking players with no hair to <laughs> yeah, cover them? To cover it. Mm, maybe they've got Serge Nabry. Serge Nabry did quite well so, you know, on the Asia tour, which and, is now over. And, and Giroud, is, is he on form suddenly? Um, yeah, well, the thing is, if Jovino is going to play as a striker, then obviously Giroud's done much better. I, I know a lot of people don't rate Giroud, but I certainly do. He scored a lot more goals than Jovino and set up a lot more goals. Yeah. I, I don't, don't see how that could be disputed. But then Jovino is not. Not the most uh, popular player. Um, hair, not in any position. Hair, it's well, I'd be quite quite pleased with him if he just could score. Mm. That would that would be a bonus for a striker. Or if he could cross. If there was any sort of end product, I'd be talking of products. Yeah, yeah there you go. But you're you not really Japan. advertising much. No, this is what we're using Japan a lot, so What I kind of company is Roto? Let's just let's just. They're on the back of the uh, Gamble Saka shirt actually, yeah. and uh, they're uh, a pharmaceutical company. Oh, really? They sell drugs. Yeah. That's unusual for, to sponsor a football team. There's not many pharmaceutical companies advertising on, on shirts and, and that sort of thing in the oh, UK. I oh, yeah, I've got yeah, to mention Columbia, but yeah. just the UK. Right, should we go back to... Um, so, anyway, oh, you were saying, Marlin, yeah, you're saying it's a bit of a smokescreen, perhaps? I think there's always been smokescreens, and Mr. Wenger is actually good at these smokescreens, isn't Yes, he, he is. You know, yeah. Suddenly, yeah. suddenly on smoker. International Week, all oh, the players injured, and then yeah. you know, the day of the game, he's, he's already at full training. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's recovered, and he's okay yeah. for the weekend. Um, not saying Mr. Wenger does anything yeah. wrong at all, but, uh, you know, he's thinking of the club, and that's a good thing. I'm thinking with Vermaelen, it's not a smokescreen. Because he's still club captain. For Marlon um, is a megastar in my opinion. I mean, obviously, he yeah. is, you know, yeah, and, and had that fantastic start, yeah. scoring goals left, right, and centre mm. from centre back, which is not and bad. he just slipped away a bit, didn't he? Mm. But uh, I think he's a great player myself, and I hope yeah. he doesn't leave. You know, as an Arsenal fan, yeah, which he's now become and becoming. It's, that shirt is very becoming. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, Cesc Fabregas, you're talking about superstars. No bigger superstar than him in my book. Manchester United, though. They've put in two bids, they've both been rejected. The agent, Seth's agent, says he won't be quitting Barcelona. Uh, oh, so he probably will be then, right? And um, the new boss of Barca, Gerardo Martino, also says that Seth uh, will not be leaving because he will personally reject a third bid from Manchester United. 
Do you think Arsenal fans need to worry about Cesc joining Manchester United, that possibility? Or I think no Arsenal fans need not worry about other players and other teams. Mm. I think Arsenal worry about their own yeah, teams. They've got enough to worry about. That's exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. No, no, I, I have to agree with that. Um, so what about, what about some fans have said that Arsene seems to be suggesting that his squad that he's got now is good enough with just <laughs> one addition, the Arya Sonogo. <laughs> so obviously, Vermaelen's injury he seems to believe that Bakari Sanya can uh, can cover there because he is pr- is proved he has played. I thought he's done quite well there. It has been back. proved. It, it's been proven that he can play at centre back if required. So therefore, do you think this Arsenal team can can finish fourth if they don't? We sort of had that question yesterday, didn't we? Well, what's the sad extent. thing is is that you're asking me if Arsenal can finish fourth. Yeah, well, and that's as good as it gets. Well, could they win the title with this team? I mean, is that the realistic? That's assumption of most of the fans these days. That's the ambition. That's what it amounts it's to. Like, you know, it's like Stoke City are happy to you know, escape relegation, or we haven't got Stoke again. Oh, we've yeah. got Stoke again now. Yeah. You know, can, can Vermaelen do it on a wet Tuesday night in Stoke? You know, yeah. And how are Stoke going to get on? Are they going to enlarge their pitch, I wonder? Uh, uh, do they no, have no, no Pulis. Because no, Pulis was yeah. the one who, who, who reduced the size of it, as far as I know. I'm not a Stoke fan. He did the old Soonest trip, did he? Yeah, and it worked. I think it worked pretty well, so... I think I think I may struggle without Pulis. I think Arsenal can come top five. Mm. But that's the yeah. difference between fifth and fourth is a, is a big, big difference. difference isn't so, it? so you're saying basically this, um, this team? No, let's look at we did let's look at the opposition. Yeah. Manchester United. I didn't. Mm. I only saw on Twitter that they weren't very good in Hong Kong last night. Did they lose again? I'm not sure. I didn't check. But Man United are not having a good time. Not they've got a new manager and they're not doing so well on the yeah. show. But of course, as Rio said. It's not about the results, is it? It's about yeah. it's about getting fit, you know. Yeah. And I don't know why he talks like that because he doesn't really. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so Man United, there. Man City have got another man, new manager too, and loads and loads of players, and nobody knows who's going to play for them. Uh, Spurs, well, if they lose Bale, that's a big thing, right? But Spurs yes, are yeah. settled, right? Spurs yeah. seem to be settled, unless Bale goes for ninety-eight million pounds or something ridiculous. I heard. Yeah. And if he does go for anything mm. more than even twenty-five or thirty, his football's gone mad. Football's gone mad, I tell you. And there's something to, something to be said for being settled, right? Mm, settled indeed. You know, so even settled. though this team might not be a team of superstars, it's very difficult to pick a superstar in this particular Arsenal team, but it's a team game. Arsenal are settled. settled. And it's a settled team. But and will someone like Suarez come in and mess up the settlement? Yeah, it may well happen. If Suarez does indeed join, which, well... I'll believe it when it happens, put it like that. September the 1st, I reckon. <laughs> but it, yeah, the way, the way it's going. But somebody said, again, I can't remember if I mentioned it in the previous vlog, but if I didn't, I should have done. What about this whole idea about delaying this transfer till the last possible moment, because he's going to be suspended for the first few games of the season because of the biting incident. So he's going to miss the first part of the season anyway. So what is the point in bringing him in early, paying his wages, which are exorbitant, paying the transfer fee early, when you can wait until the last minute, which is what Arsenal tend to do nowadays, wait until the last minute, get him for a bargain price, and not have to pay his wages. Because that is my theory now about why Arsenal wait and wait and wait, is they just don't want to pick up the wage tab early on. Exactly. Their salary, sal- you know, in terms of salaries, yeah. they pay at least a fourth pint in the Premier League. Mm. And if they wait a month, they'll save, save a million quid, maybe. Yeah, you know? at least. Let's hope he's not getting too enough to have a good week. But well, no, maybe not quite that. That's really his salary. And think. did he ask for a transfer? Not yet. So technically, mm. he doesn't have to pay his agent either. Yeah. yeah. So there is, um, well, you know, the old 5% or whatever it was. I'm sure he's going to get his cut anyway. But um, mm. if he asks for a transfer, the player actually loses yes, uh, quite yeah. a lot of money. And of course, the agent money. loses too. So, yeah, so, so instead, the agent. Mm. Spreads it out all around everywhere. That he was thinking about leaving. He's going to leave. He's must to leave. Must. But he hasn't actually asked for transfer. So do you actually think he in. will will join Arsenal? Judging by all the Suarez, a huge amount of publicity. Um, I think uh, Manchester United for Suarez and Fabregas for Arsenal. Well, <laughs> did I say the right thing? The way you did that it was very Austin Powers, by the way. No, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. it's, your guess is as good as that guy over there is yeah. keeping really quiet in the corner. And it could just be paper talk. But this isn't paper talk, this is website talk, and I'm going to ask you a few things that, that sort of relates to football in general. Why does it take so long for the transfers to take place? And I went to a website, which is very pro Wenger, by the way, called Untold Arsenal. I do read it from time to time, because I like to, I like to keep my options open. I'm not, I'm not anti, I'm not pro Wenger. I just, I just try, and, try and be neutral about these things. 
But um, the reasons given for these for this process taking so long, and there's a huge amount of reasons why, according to somebody who was a former agent, unnamed. But um, first of all, you're not going to dispute this. You can't approach a player who's under contract. Indeed, and officially. But and or to me, to me, directly or directly, an agent or a team saying that they're interested in a player or they've spoken to his agent. That to me is an approach. Mm. I think, and this will really upset anybody who works for a newspaper here and makes mm. some money from a newspaper. There should be no talk about transfers in newspapers. Really, you think that? I really think you know. Let's let's look. Well, look at our lives would be so boring. That would be boring. Boring, but it would be so legally correct. You know, I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Let's look at. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, let's take Fabregas. Mm. Do you think he's actually ever asked for a transfer? Do you think he's actually ever said? Look at this Kagawa story I was mm. mentioning. You know, mm. there's there's stories going around today about mm. Kagawa wants to go back to Dortmund. Kagawa intends to go back to Dortmund. No, somebody asked him if he'd ever go back to Dortmund. And of course he doesn't want to upset the Dortmund fans. Mm. We said, well, of course I would go back if the opportunity arose. Oh, Kagawa wants to go back to Dortmund. That's unsettling to Dortmund fans who mm. think he might be coming. To the Dortmund players who think they might lose the place. To Manchester United fans who think, did he really say that? To so Kagawa himself. It's just totally unsettling. And I think mm. transfer things should be banned until they're actually done. Mm, I'm not sure I agree with Just that. Like because that, tapping, no tapping up, up yeah. exactly. Yeah. And what about tapping up? Tapping up's going to go on regardless. Do you, do you know, I just wanted to throw this in. I actually, and there was no, no sort of media involved, I got accused of tapping up a player once. Well, I've got away. Is a euphemism, Jack? No, I actually did <laughs> get accused of I was only about 12 years old, and I got hauled into the manager's office. You shouldn't be tapping up my players. I brought my dad along, you know, for a bit of moral support. And uh, basically, I got away with it, but I got lectured for about three to four hours because I changed my club, and my friend wanted to join me at the new club, and and the manager kicked up a huge fuss about it. So tapping will go on because players will talk to players, and if one's moving, I mean, is that tapping up? Clearly, to some people, it is. And if it is, then someone should do something about it. Find the player, yeah. even if he's 12 years old. And it's very difficult to define what is tapping up yeah. anyway. So, so my point is. Transfers are interesting. I don't want, I don't want that. To, what's that appearing on on the screen? That doesn't look too um, too promising. Anyway, what about um, all the other things they've got to evaluate? The player's age, his versatility, his psychological profile, and so on and so on, and so forth. Family obligations, which you've mentioned at some point. Mm -hmm. His injury record. There's all these things to consider, and because of that, it takes forever to complete the transfer, according uh, to this particular writer. Plus, Arsene Wenger's got his views. His, the player's got to be good on the ball, he's got to be mature, he's got to show a certain amount of teamwork, all of these things. I would add, I've, I've heard from insiders that he looks for pace, and, and I think there's a lot of evidence of that. And he also looks for the running off the ball. Um, that's what I believe that wasn't in so, the article. So it's probably so very interesting to me then. And so because of that, he would possibly be interested in you, but the teamwork side of it would have let him down back in the day. You were selfish, greedy, and um, lots of other words that I don't want to say on, on camera. Um, but you were a good goal scorer. Scored a lot of goals. You did. Like you were really good at Still that. Still do. Yeah, so I'll keep you in my team, but that, that would be me. But Arsene would have said no. I'm not having him. Peter said no after mm -hmm. he done the computer evaluation. Peter said no. Even though you got the pace, he would say no. I do not like his attitude. He's too, uh, he made too many jokes and upset half of my players. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> That's true. So, um, and also it's a team decision because they've got a triumvirate of people making these decisions and not including Wenger, they've got Gazidis, the CEO, they've got, and I found this interesting, they're called Dick Law, Tim Law, so that made me doubt the validity of the article in the first place. Yeah. The medical team got to be involved, Steve Bold, the assistant manager, and I would add to that list, David Mills, oh uh, Miles, sorry, David Miles, who is the club secretary, all of those people supposedly involved, at least three of them anyway. Uh, Law, Kazidis and Miles. So all of those. And another reason why these take a long time, replacements need to be found first before a deal can happen. But do you believe, what's the quickest ever transfer you reckon has ever taken place? This article says one week. I disagree. I think it be done in a day, four hours. If suddenly somebody, especially if somebody, you know, let's say 